Welcome to Impact Farming, where we introduce you to the people and ideas that will have a massive impact on your farming operation. Brought to you by Farm Marketer. Sit down, start the engine, and let's roll with today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Impact Farming Show. Today, we have another awesome guest with us. We have Wade McLaughlin, who is a record-keeping specialist from Back Swath Management. Welcome, Wade. How are you? I am good. Thanks for having me on. It is my pleasure. As you are probably familiar with, and our audience definitely knows, I am extremely passionate about farm business management here on our show. That is one of our main contents and the reason I created this show. And to me, the biggest part of that is financials. And as you know, and we're going to dive into, your financials are only as good as the information that's entered. So I am really, really excited to chat about this topic and get you to share what you see as the top five mistakes farmers make that are costing them money. So are you ready to roll? I think we're ready to roll, sure. Okay. Pardon me? We're diving right into it. We're diving right in. Okay. So your first point that I know you wanted to talk about is not having a system set up. Do you want to speak to our audience about that? Yeah. So a system for bookkeeping is very important. It's uh, like bookkeeping is the foundation like of your financial system of the information you're getting. How is it coming in? is very important. So you need a consistent system to uh, get that information in. Um, So one important thing is to choose the correct software. There's a bunch out there, Um, can be overwhelming. I know some people use pen and paper, but I think the uh, accounting software will help you get the data out of of, uh, your bookkeeping system a lot better than a pen and paper system. (laughs) Amen. Um, So yeah, you don't necessarily, have to use an egg specific software. Um, you can, there's lots out there, like I said, but choose one, stick with it for a while at least. And if, you know, get some training, we can offer training. There's lots of people that can offer training on how to get it set up. Um, so, and the other part of your system is you want to know what you want to track um, for management purposes, right? Some people, We'll just start throwing things into different accounts and stuff when they have their system where they should be, you know, more consistent in what they want to track. So like, say you want to track uh, tractor expenses. What is this tractor costing me per year in repairs and other things? So you want to set up um, what's called the chart of accounts, mm-hmm. yep. which is the foundation of it of your uh, information tracking system, your bookkeeping. So that's where you would want to set up different accounts. Do I want to track my uh, tractor expenses or my fertilizer? Do I want to split that out into the different types or do I want to lump it all together? What what do you want to manage by? And then you set up your chart of accounts so that you will have that information in a, in a, in a way that you can consistently read it and understand it and others can help you read it and understand it if you love it for can i hop in there really quick wait yeah you'll notice i'll do that because i i'm really passionate about this subject so i have a bookkeeper that does our bookkeeper and accounting team that does our farm marketer books and then we have for the farm and that's exactly what i do when we get the credit card bill or the bank statement instead of just winging it and not consistently entering it. I actually have folder with the accounts The well, for my business would be advertising this, this, this. When I go through, I actually code it for my bookkeeper. If I was the one entering it, then, then I would know and enter it accordingly. But it's so important, right? Because even if you take one wrong receipt and then code it to the wrong account, then you're not really looking at accurate records. That's right, yeah. And that's, yeah, so a lot of, like, the, I do the, I use the tractor example because it's a big one for farming, right? Like equipment, right? Yeah. So, yeah, coding is a very good thing. Like, you, you number your chart of accounts 
it's easy to give uh, whoever is buying the parts and stuff, right? Yeah. Here's, when you buy this, write this number on the invoice and then give it to whoever's doing the accounting, right? Love it. Are you saying tractor specifically because you know my biggest example I always use on this show? <laughs> okay, you guys in the audience, bear with me. One of my main things here and where solid bookkeeping and financials has been a good help for us. As farmers, we're so busy and you spend, you spend, you spend, and a thousand here, 500 here, it doesn't really feel like a lot, right? And yeah. I know Anthony and I have both done it. And you go, okay, tractor repairs should have been $10,000. And hey, we're smart people. Everybody out there is smart people. You just lose track. Yeah. At the end of the year, you go, oh my gosh, tractor repairs was $30,000. I have this tractor we had that was terrible. So that happens one year. Happens yeah. the next year. It's like, okay, we have the power of bookkeeping and proper financials, accurately coded. Now we're looking at a tractor that's costing us way more than we ever thought. What's the management decision here? Like, can that tractor leave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it in the back 40? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And it'll help you to budget better that way too, right? If you're tracking for the next year. Yes. No, that tractor instead of a lump sum of $10,000 for a tractor repair, so, and you got three tractors, well, which one is it? And a lot of farmers and will have a good gut feeling, right? Yeah. But they won't know exact, right? Exactly. Well, right. and it's so easy for a thousand here and there to add up in farming, right? Yep. Where all of a sudden you have 5,000 more, 10,000 more than you thought. It sounds silly because it's a good chunk of money, but farmers spend a lot of money. It's easy to lose track. And 10 grand that you don't account for, that makes a big difference at the bottom, right? It definitely adds up. Yeah. yeah, and if you do that a few times on a few different expenses, <laughs> well, hey, that's 30 grand you didn't account for. So, so on, so on. As you can tell, I'm passionate about this. And you'll be happy to know that tractor is, pa is kind of parked in the back 40. <laughs> and... I'm super happy we're doing our farm budget for this year. We've yeah. only budgeted in repairs, and that's not even the tractor, 10 grand for the year. We have a bunch of bail or work to do. So it's powerful when it's yeah. recorded, looked at, and managed from there, right? Absolutely. Okay. The other thing the chatter, for the chart of accounts too is to be on the consistent side, knowing what's going into each account. Mm. So, like, a, and I'm more on the administration side. It usually happens, but they'll be like, oh. well, "This is for postage." What do? It? So I don't have a postage account, so I'll make a postage account, yeah. right? They keep adding and adding to their chart to your chart of accounts, which isn't a good idea. You should get that foundation and know mm. which account instead of well, I don't have an account for that this year, so I'll add it in there. You have to, is it a material thing? Do I need a postage account? Am I going to make a management decision on postage versus just office expenses? Right. So there's those things you need to write out and decide to help you. The first couple years of keeping records for the farm and for our business, it was the same thing. It's like, because you're learning as you go and you go, oh, I'd like to see that. So then you add it but then you have a zero from the year before. So when you finally get to that place where you're like, yes, I have everything broken down how I want, that's where it gets extra powerful too. It's funny you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that, guilty. There you go. Okay, love it. Okay, so that is not having a system add, not having a system set up. Is there anything you want to add to that? Or would you like to chat about how often we should be doing our bookkeeping. Yes, regularly, very <laughs> often. <laughs> Point done, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, again, it goes back to that, it, it, it can add up quick, right? Um, $1,000 here, $1,000 there. If you're not doing it on a regular basis and you just do it, say, at the end of the year, you throw it into the account and then you get that back Say so your end is December, you get it back April, if you're lucky sometimes, right? And spent 30,000 on tractor repairs? Yes. 
you know, you're halfway into your next year. How does that help you make this? It's not going to help you make a decision on those on that tractor or whatever, right? Absolutely. So, very consistent basis will help for that and for cash flow managing, helping you to manage your cash flow, right? Yeah. I depending on the size of the business, but some clients, I go in weekly to their bank account and reconcile it. And oh wow, where you're at, right? The bigger the bigger you are, yes, decisions make a bigger impact, right? Well, actually, it's kind of vice versa. You can. Actually, on a smaller farm, it can be a bigger impact, right? If you're not yeah. managing on a regular basis. I agree. So, yeah, it's definitely definitely important. At the, at the very least, monthly, doing your bookkeeping. Um, I would say entering your bills and everything on a regular basis. That way you know, you know, at the end of the month, how, who do you owe, how much do you owe, who owes you, things like that. Um, and then reconciling your bank accounts and credit cards on a monthly basis at, at minimum. But like I said, if you're diligent and do it weekly, that is a time saver at the end of the month and you, you won't maybe feel as overwhelmed, mm -hmm. right? for, especially for someone who doesn't like doing it or <laughs> isn't experienced. Yeah. It becomes a habit a bit more, yeah. right? Yeah, you get that weekly habit and you don't have that big, I mean, oh, I got to reconcile a bank account at the end of the month. I don't want to. So true. It's, it's, it's a nice sunny day. Let's go out into the back 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's so easy to do, right? Especially as business owners and farmers in the audience, as we can all attest to, that's not what we love to do, right? You love to do that. We don't. And what do we do when we have something that we don't want to do? Well, we find something else that's more important. And as we know, on the farm, there's always some kind of crisis or something to do. So what right. happens, right? Yeah. And to be completely honest, for our business, like Farm Marketer, we do monthly books. And that's great. We have revenue in every month, expenses out. That has worked for me. But in the past, on the farm, we've been, well, okay, well, we you only get paid once a year, so we won't be as timely. And you yeah. know what, we're both, we have solid accounts now. We're both to the point where we're gonna be doing that monthly as well on the farm because we were doing quarterly, but that's a big time span. And like you said, by the time the accountant gets set back, you're, you're just time slipping away and then yeah. you're behind the eight ball. And it's not a nice feeling and I'm sure you can attest to it. When you know the power of bookkeeping and just looking at those financials going, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. When you don't have that data, like on the farm, it's like, wait a minute. I, I always, it's a little weird. I'm not a numbers gal by any means, but when you're a business owner, you gotta be on top of them. And when I look at my numbers for farm marketer all the time and you feel good, then you're feeling a little wiggy is what I call it on the farm, like if, if it's a while that we haven't looked at financials, it's like, ah, where are we? And it's very uncomfortable, right? Yeah, and I, and I hear that, like going back to what you were saying about, well, you only get paid once or twice a year in far, per farm, right? Yeah. But in a way it makes your regular bookkeeping even more important because you only have that cash come in once or twice a year, right? Yep. So you have to be on top of that. Uh, expenses and where's your, where's your money going and are we on budget because otherwise you'll spend all that money <laughs> amen that does happen if you are not on top of your numbers that's why I'm so passionate about this conversation and I know that the strong farm management blah 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 need more coffee today the strong <laughs> farm managers they're good on the production side on producing their crops or livestock, but they're also very strong on the business, right? Because if you improve your yield on your crop, which is super important, but you're blowing money over here because you're not tracking, well, you're just defeating the purpose, right? Yeah, absolutely. Have you sensed I'm a little bit passionate about this? That's good, it's, it's rare. <laughs> you know, and most, I'm not, sorry, go ahead. Well, I just, most, most farmers, most business, even not just farmers, even most business people I deal with, they didn't get into it to do the books, right? Right. 
you know, they're, they're more passionate about what they're doing and you know, they want to make money, of course, but. You know, gotta... I would be the same way. That's not, it's trained though, because I realized the power in it. And when I wasn't quite on top of my books, you lose track, you make mistakes, and then you end up in a position that you don't want to. And for me in this show and why I'm passionate about it is farming is risky enough that I think we need to be extra on top of our numbers because heck, if you continue to lose money because you're not managing your expenses correctly, how many times can a farm lose money before things get bad, right? And, so much, yeah. and our goal as farmers, I know most of us, if we have children, we wanna pass on our farms. So to me, the onus is on me to make sure that my business is strong so that we don't have any big oopses and nothing bad happens. So anyways, that's my sermon. <laughs> that's it. very good. Amen. <laughs> oh, amen, brother. <laughs> oh, okay. Another good reason to do it on a regular basis. Like I, I was just dealing with a, a client and one of his complaints from not doing regular bookkeeping is he was kind of a shoebox client, right? So at the end of the year, goes into the accountant, you know, he's, you know, doesn't get his stuff back to April, but they're calling him in like March. What was this check you wrote for back in February last year? What was that for? Yes. I mean, you know, he's getting ready for seating and stuff. He doesn't want to have to deal with that. Yeah. Right. So if you do with it, do it on a regular basis, you won't, you know, you avoid those kind of situations. That's a great point. Even going back like two weeks, it's like, what was that? <laughs> Let alone a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, geez. Okay, that's excellent. So number one, not having a system set up. Number two, not doing the bookkeeping on a regular basis. Number three, not keeping personal and business separate. Take it yes. away. <laughs> this is, yeah, uh, it's it's one of the common things and I know a lot of it's especially if you're not doing bookkeeping on a regular basis and you're using a company bank account like a personal bank account for the account at the end of the year to separate all that out is very timely right it's mm -hmm. hard to manage cash flow um, tax purposes and stuff. even if you're like a sole proprietor or something it's good to have two separate bank accounts um, one is because personally put yourself on a budget mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. how much do you need from the business every month take it out put it in your personal right yeah and then as much as you can don't well don't dip into the business account when you're out for dinner or whatever right <laughs> yes yes um, same with credit cards you know get us Try to get, if you can, get a separate credit card for business and your personal. It just keeps things a lot cleaner. If you ever get audited, it's a lot cleaner for the auditors and that makes your life better and theirs. So that's a, that's a big one. Um, yeah, I, know I see a lot of grocery store uh, purchases on business credit cards. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard enough to keep track of your personal as a budgeting and keeping track of expenses, let alone adding that into the mix of business. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The big one is put yourself on a budget. How much do you need to live? Right. Take that out. And then at the end of the year, and of course you'd have to talk to whatever your financial goals are, you know, your planner or whatever, there's different ways you can T4, you can dividend, whatever. But even if you just do a, a a monthly draw or bi-monthly draw, draw with the rest of the payroll. If you even if you're not on payroll, it'll help you budget both your personal and business. I love it. Actually, I'll speak to that too personally. Again, farm our books are to the T. We've been a little. We have good strong books for um, for the farm, and that's amazing. But I have a few tasks this year. My goals, and one of them is working on our farm ratios. I talked to Terry about that in another episode. And for us is making sure our books are done monthly now. Same process is my media company. And the other thing, we're finally gonna start 
an account for Anthony because that's where he spends out of that personal. We've never done it. And you're right. It's, you kind of go, do you need to do that? And you want to take the money out. What a pain. But when your bookkeeper is coming back to you and going this, 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 and it's also exactly like you said, right? It yeah. just helps you keep track of that spending. I always like to bug Anthony about the famous 200 Canadian tire. Every time he gets off the farm, <laughs> he goes to Canadian tire. And well, sometimes it's more than that, but I'm like famous 200 today. And that's, that's a mix. I mean, he's probably buying stuff for the farm, but same right. concept, right? It, it's just messy. How much yeah. of that is actually farm expense or put X many dollars into your account yeah, i guess you're essentially paying a wage and then then you know right yeah you know you yeah. get you get a Canadian tire and that nice big air compressor is on sale but you know do, who do you buy it out of right is it business or is it pleasure is it for your hobby is it for the business blah 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 and canadian tire always seems to have great sales don't they <laughs> that always something's got to be on sale they have those big aisles right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> At least that's how I remember it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? What? A store? Like you go in and buy stuff? Yeah. <laughs> As we're in the middle of pandemic lockdowns in Manitoba. Oh boy. Okay. Fun stuff. That's, I love that one too. That is really important. Keeping business and personal separate. Anything more on that or moving on to the next point? Uh, yeah. No, I think that's, uh, that one's pretty straightforward. <laughs> it should be anyway. Yeah, that's an easy one. So number four, we have two points left. Number four is only doing your bookkeeping for tax purposes. Do you want to share what you mean by that? Yeah, well, kind of it is to the back to the, I didn't get in business to do or farming to do books and stuff, right? It's something the government's making me do, right? Because I have to file taxes. So I'll take my shoebox into the account at the end of the year. And that'll be that. You'll make me pay zero tax and away I go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the bookkeeping is much more for uh, the financial health of your business, right? And for you to be able to manage your business. Like we were saying with the tractor expenses and, and the ratio of things, which gets into the deeper financial management, like cash flow, you're not doing it on a, you need to be doing it for those purposes so that you can improve your business um, operation decisions and stuff, right? Yes. Um, yeah. And, and one of the other things, so a lot of businesses do it on a cash basis, right? Accounting. Mm -hmm. And this, we're trying to get in business or farmers at least, most other businesses do accrual accounting. Farmers do usually cash, especially for tax recording. Mm -hmm. But businesses need, or farmers need to just, I think, start get on an accrual basis. And what accrual accounting is. I was gonna ask. <laughs> accrual accounting is trying to match, well, it matches the revenue and expenses, right? The, the expenses that, that was generated, right? So, all those expenses, say, in your, to bring that crop in for 2020, right? You want to match that to the revenue from that crop. Mm -hmm. So with cash accounting, what, else, what can happen, right, is you have all these expenses, and then if you don't sell that grain till January, right? Yes. And that's for tax purposes, right, on a cash basis, but... If you don't tell it to January and then you get your income statement or your uh, do a cash income statement, you might be losing a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah. But then you sold two hundred thousand dollars worth of that crop in January. Well, you actually made a hundred thousand last year. Yes. So that helps you better manage, you know, financial financial management. Did we make money or did we not? We might have to do a separate episode on this one because this drives me nuts. That's part of my big beef with farm books is you go, okay, like you said, there's X many thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars expenses and then you only sold half your animals in that year and you lose that much. 
for me, I, I kind of call it Tracy's Jerry rigged bookkeeping accounting. <laughs> I, I hopefully am not going to jail for this. <laughs> no, it's all legit. <laughs> but what I do, and I would maybe love to learn a better way to just accrue it. I take the year, the income and expense statement for the year. And obviously let's say half of the animals got sold. We're going to have a big loss at the bottom. I actually ignore the top part. And I, yes, this is Tracy's Jerry rig. Don't, don't take examples from me, but it serves my purpose because that doesn't help me out. You go, okay, how much did we actually make? So what I do is I just actually dump it into Excel, go, X many calves at this dollar called cows, called bulls. This is what we actually sold in the year. This is our income. And yeah. then I get some true actual books. That's what I do for the farm. Yeah. In my, in my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's better. I can think again, get confusing, right? When you, when you go. Yeah. Through, you're right. You probably could do you. You probably need for me to explain it better. I'd probably need props, right? Yes. Maybe this is another episode. I, I actually have always wanted to do an episode on this. I think this messes up a lot of people. Yeah. And, and especially even when I get farmers on accrual, the way you do it, there's, there's stuff called inventory adjustments. Okay. Right. And that's how we, you get the revenue to the ex, match the expenses. But then when you sell that grain the next year, like say in 2021, you sell your 2020 crop. Um, you've already recorded that revenue. So now you have to make an adjustment. So you're not adding that revenue to 2021. That's how it works. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's an account called inventory adjustments. Anyone who's on uses uh, egg expert software and stuff will probably see that. Um, oh. Oh, this is excellent. Thank you. Yeah. But then what I've been doing is separating out those adjustments so you can see what effect, so say 2020 crop, right? Mm -hmm. we, let's say it's 100,000. I'll try to do this verbally. <laughs> yeah. Say you have a $100,000 worth of crop in 2020. We record that revenue. And then we go into 2021. And at the, in October, whatever, you want to record the 2021 crop. So we record that revenue as, so let's say 150,000, right? Now you sell 2020 crop year in 2021. Yep. Now usually we record that as a revenue, right? Right. But after you've already recorded in 2021 and our 2020, right? So you yep. don't want to get revenue in 2021. Huh. So you have to kind of negative it out. That's the inventory adjustment. So say that hundred thousand you wrote though, <laughs> this is where it can get even more complicated. So you oh, sell, right? Well, you recorded it at hundred, but say you sold it for one hundred and ten, right? So it has a positive ten thousand dollar impact on your on your twenty twenty one year end. Yeah. Right, but it okay. has nothing to do with twenty twenty one crop year. Okay. Right. Is there another adjustment for the adjustment of the adjustment? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that that's where. It, it, it depending on what accounting software or you can do it in a spreadsheet. You know, you I have two columns. I have twenty twenty and twenty twenty one as on the income statement, right? So okay. column twenty twenty, there's a net increase of ten thousand, right? Because we sold it for more. And then twenty twenty one, one hundred and fifty thousand and all the expenses and say we made fifty thousand on twenty twenty one crop year. Plus the ten thousand from last year, sixty thousand you made in twenty twenty one. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I didn't, you know, out of all these times that's come up, I've never dove into it. I just, I didn't even realize I was doing Tracy's Jerry rigged accru accrual accounting, <laughs> <laughs> but not yeah. official. Right. That's awesome. Thank you for explaining that. That's that is really important. I think that. One, that messed us up with farm, farm financials because it's very hard to figure things out when your income's not there. So that is why I ended up going, okay, well, we don't have monthly income coming in. How do we figure this out? So that's really cool. I shall be speaking to my bookkeeper about this. 
<laughs> Very good. Awesome. Yeah. So that's that's one of the one thing about not only doing it for tax purposes, right? You want to do it for management purposes and the accrual stuff is very important for that. And the other thing is to do a cash budget, right? Do a cash flow budget, bookkeeping and do it, do your budget to actuals, right? Yeah. You know, some banks make farmers do uh, cash budgets, right? Cash flow statements. Yeah. And then it sits on the shelf, right? And part of the reason I think for that is if you're not doing regular bookkeeping, you have nothing to go back and compare it to, right? So yeah. if you're keeping and you have that budget, put in the actuals, see where you're at. Do it on a monthly basis, right? I know I've had farmers say, well, why do I need to do it monthly? You know, it's, or even the accrual part, why do I have to do accrual, right? It'll wash out in the end, right? But one, another go back to that, right? So you're doing cash accounting and you pre-purchase a bunch of fertilizer in the fall. Right, prepay the fertilizer. Okay. But if you're doing cash and you pay for it in October, it's going in that 2020 crop year, right? Right. And it's for so next year. This it's year. for next year's crop. It's not for for 2020. So yeah. I do it, that. Uh, I'm really looking at fine tuning our farm books this year too. That's one of my big New Year goals. <laughs> <laughs> such an accounting geek, aren't I? But for Farm Market or what I actually ended up doing, another one of Tracy's jerry rig systems is every month when I got my monthly financials, I would get it in Excel and I just started building my cash flow. I'd take my financials from each month and plop in the expenses. And, you know, to me, when you're starting your books, you have an awkward year or two where you're kind of learning but now what I do, and I'm going to be doing in the next week or so, is taking my cash flow document from last year, putting it over to 21, a big copy and paste, mm -hmm. and then seeing what I spent in each of the months in 2020, and then going, okay, where do we see 2021 going for Farm Marketer while I have X many dollars for show travel and client travel? Well hey, yeah, yeah, I got to put that down to almost zero because I might not be going anywhere. So same example, right? And then, you know what? It doesn't take long. And I've learned this with the farm too. I put it year by year, five years in a row. You look at those five years and unless you're all over the map with your spending, they kind of start to stay steady. And then you go, right. okay, fuel costs us 18000 a year. Right. There we go. There you go. My yeah. second sermon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, Excel is very, very powerful for doing those kind of things, and and you know, put your actuals against there as you go throughout the year and see how you're doing, and that'll even help you more doing the planning for the next year. Yeah, and, and it wow. helps. It'll help with like capital expenditures, expenditures too, right? So, say you had planned in July or whatever to buy a new combine or something, right? Or, make a down payment on one, but that tractor cost you an extra 10 grand. How does that affect your cash flow now, right? Well, and that's the thing. And I've found too, if we don't have accurate farm books, I'm not really comfortable making firm decisions, right? It's right. like, well, wait a minute, where are we at? Uh, okay, I think we can <laughs> squeeze this in. That's not a great feeling. It really oh, is. Yeah. It's the gut feeling management style, right? Yeah. And, you know, I think you guys might have even did a seminar on this, maybe Terry from Backswath, um, about mental health being greatly improved by proper farm financials. And I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not stressing out at night, right? Yeah. Because you don't know, oh my gosh, am I in the hole? What's going on, right? That's not a great feeling. Or when you go to make that combine purchase and you had those all those other expenses and you didn't know about it or you forgot about it. Yeah. You go to buy it, you don't have the money. Now what? Yeah. Now what? So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay. <laughs> so that is only doing bookkeeping for tax purposes. Don't do that. Do it and use it, right? I actually heard a stat. Um, I want to share this with you. Maybe you have a different stat, but I heard that only 50% of farms 
actually keep track, actually do bookkeeping in a software. So that's 50% of farmers. The rest, I guess, are the shoebox method. And then of those 50% that actually have farm financials, like you just said in this point, only 10% of them do something with it. When they right. get those financials back, they're like, oh, good, the accountant did their job. I don't have to pay tax. And then they just throw it in a folder. Only 10% actually use the data on there. That's what I heard. That's bad. I don't, I don't doubt it. I don't have a stat on them, but I don't doubt it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Another, yeah, another, I, I, one more. I, I, another item I wanted to put up, uh, bring up about uh, only bookkeeping for tax purposes <laughs> is enterprise uh, splitting out. So a lot of, you know, as a side or, or uh, seed plant, right? Yes. And if you don't, mark out those expenses and income separately and manage it, um, you won't know, is that seed plant making money? Well, again, it ends up being that coffee shop uh, napkin scribbling, right? Mm -hmm. And it might be somewhat accurate, but you don't, to really know and to make those management decisions, do we keep the seed plant, do, do we keep trucking or do we buy another truck for trucking? Funny you say that. This is so very relevant on my brain and what we're going through <laughs> right now. We have a purebred herd operation and then our commercial herd. Mm -hmm. And they're all mixed together right now. And we were just talking about trying to keep track of those separate because if you're spending all this money on purebred animals and then you're doing this and this and this, what is that enterprise cost and bring in right so that's funny you say that yeah very important and useful management tool <laughs> excellent okay we're rounding around home here to number five not knowing when to hire professional help i love this one too yeah a lot of uh again it goes back to uh you didn't get into business through bookkeeping right yeah. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of times, especially in farms, but it happens in other industries too, where, well, the wife or someone else in the family has time. Mm -hmm. Grandma, grandma, whatever, they're kind of retired, but they get them to do the bookkeeping, right? Yes. And that can work to some degree, but... If they're not trained, <laughs> right, or they don't have know how to set up the system or whatever. So, yeah, I guess one of the number one things is don't put it off or don't put it off onto some other family member just because they're there. Yes. Amen. And they can do it. And also some, even, I know a lot of, it happens to a lot of people too, that they get tasked with it, but they want to be out in that tractor and maybe they're more useful out in the field, right? Than sitting in the office doing whatever. I so again, agree. you can earn more money and be more productive, maybe doing something else, right? Than spending a few extra dollars to hire someone to do it on a regular basis. And you'll get more in-depth, better financial uh, information. So yeah. And you can also hire someone like just, just to have a review of what you're doing currently, right? Or like what you're going through. How do I set up this enterprise thing? How am I gonna, can I do it with my current software? How would I do it? There's all those things that a professional can help you work through and train and have a better system. I love it. Can I get on my soapbox? Absolutely. One last uh, time. Yeah. <laughs> One last time. Let's go, Wayne. So I'm going to be really passionate about this one because I've been in that position and I'm going to be stereotypical. If you guys want to send me nasty emails, go ahead. But honestly, as we all know, in farming, the expectation, the task tends to fall on mom, the wife, the female in the family. Not always, 
but I'm just going to call it how it is. In our farm family, that's how it happened, right? Oh, I'm the female. I'm going to do the bookkeeping. Guess what? I'm busy with my own media company. Don't even do my bookkeeping because that's not the best use of my time. I need to be having great conversations like this. But I had a conversation with a friend and a few other women. And my goodness, these women take care of the house. They take care of the children. They probably work off farm and they help out on the farm. Whatever your situation is, it always breaks my heart because I always see everybody expecting themselves to do it. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. But then you're doing it once a year and there's no value in that. And as business owners and people, I think we have that bad mentality. The I can do it. Yes, sure. You can do it. But you know what? If you want strong financials, let somebody else do it for a very reasonable price. And I even gave one of my friends, heck, four children, a big farm. And she might have even worked at that point. I can't remember. And I said, honestly, Susie Q, I'll just make a name, Susie Q, if your husband or you were to go buy something on the farm for the equivalent of bookkeeping, you wouldn't think twice about spending that. And she said, no, he would go and spend that cost. Famous Canadian tire a few times, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't cost a lot. And to me, once we get over ourselves and realize we can't do it all, and there's probably better places we can spend our time and smarter people to do it, then I think that's really where the power is. I'm, Uh, Everything you've said, I'm super passionate about, but that bottom one, I've really struggled with that. And you know, when I finally let go of that, oh my gosh, felt like a million bucks. I hate record keeping. I like reading it at the end. (laughs) I don't want to do it. And therefore I often didn't do it. Right. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Soapbox done. (laughs) Buzz. And I find a lot too, like a lot of people, I think back in, think in their back of their heads and their minds, they're like, wow, it won't take that long for me to do it, right? Yeah. That long. But again, if you're not enjoying doing it, right, and you have all these other tasks that are taking priority, yeah. that's how you get to it, just the mental, the mental power that it's taking for you to get into it and start doing it can yeah. be, I mean, right, and makes you less efficient too, right? If, if you're not enjoying something, you don't work as passionately about it and efficiently. Well, and I find sometimes items like that, we all know we're busy and we have a lot to do. When I have items like that, where I'm standing in my own way, they kind of loom over you like a black cloud, right? You walk by that office and you go, oh, bookkeeping. Oh my gosh, I'm three months behind. And that stress alone, I always say, to pay somebody to take that cloud away is great in itself. (laughs) (laughs) Been there. Hey, you're yeah. preaching to the converted with this because I've been through every single one of the steps that you've just talked about. So fantastic. Okay. We're going to work to wrap the episode up. Do you have anything that you want to share? No pressure. You've shared five amazing points right there and I'm super excited. Anything else you want to share before I wrap it up? Uh I'll just encourage everyone to, you know, get a, get some, just at least get some advice. See, see how you can improve your current system at the minimum, right? Love it. And get that cloud away from your head. <laughs> Love it. Yes, that is awesome. Thank you, Wade, for the interview. You are awesome show guest. You are great at what you do. And I appreciate you spending the time with myself and our audience to help us improve our farming operations. So thank you very much. If people want to find out more about you guys, because I think you work with clients across Canada, don't you? In various parts of the business? Yeah. If they want to. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Out there, yeah. Yeah. Right across, okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We set up, we're basically set up to help everybody remotely. Okay. The current situation has really taken off and I think more people are becoming more comfortable with it. So it's very possible to do everything. If you want to find out more, where can they go? Uh, They can go to the website. I think it's www.backswap.com. Excellent. 
Well, thank you so much for your time, Wade. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you for joining us on another episode of the Impact Farming Show. If you like it, like it, share it, and get it out there so other farmers can learn from Wade's awesome wisdom. Thank you, guys. Bye. You've been listening to Impact Farming. For more great episodes and articles designed to help you manage and grow your farming operation, head on over to farmmarketer.com. Don't forget to sign up while you're there. We will see you on the next episode.